Hey guys, and welcome to my first video of 2022. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how to turn my Sony A6600 crop sensor, or also known as APS-C camera, into this affordable and badass looking cinema camera rig. And I'm gonna walk you through step by step of every piece on this, how to build it, and why you would even wanna set up like this. So you might be asking why even build this camera rig, and why not just use a gimbal? Well, you don't always want a perfectly smooth, buttery shot. You also don't necessarily need long, you know, moving shots. You might just want some static shots, or you might want to create a different feel to your film or help tell your story a little bit better. Mirrorless cameras are awesome, but they aren't really designed for shooting video. They're more like still cameras that just shoot really high quality video, but they're not really set up really that well for shooting video. So that's one of the reasons why we build out a camera rig to make it a lot easier to shoot specifically video, basically making this camera into a cinema camera. So there's actually a lot of famous movies and television shows that are shot handheld, one of them being Black Swan, another one, Jackie, as well as a lot of documentaries. So this kind of handheld look gives a little bit more of a raw, uncut, like more personal feeling, a more uh, human touch to the film. For me, I think it also gives it just kind of a more like artsy feel to it. I love using it in my just more creative, fun shoots that I'm making, you know, trying to be more like old school filmic and artsy. Uh, I love the handheld look. And any documentaries that I do, I love shooting handheld. And even music videos, I usually shoot a take uh, with the gimbal and then I'll shoot a take handheld. And sometimes I like those really like in your face, like more raw looks to the handheld shot. So if you're on a budget and you also like to travel with your setup, a small APS-C camera with this build I'm about to show you might be a perfect setup for you. It's just about as affordable as it gets for building out a cinema camera rig. And it also breaks down to this super small Forum as well. So I have on here the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. This is a great all around lens that I use for just about everything. It works out to I think like a 25 millimeter uh, because it's an APS-C. Don't ask me to get into all those conversions, but basically it ends up being what like a full frame 25 millimeter would look like, just to give you some reference. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the camera cage. So I like small rig. Don't ask me why, it's affordable, um, they work great, they have everything I need on them. And it attaches, I pretty much have to take off my lens every time I attach this just because this is kind of a wider lens. On smaller lenses, like my 50 millimeter I have, I don't have to do that. And this just screws right into the bottom of your camera. And the thing I really like about this particular cage is that it comes with this little tool that just nests right in here, it's magnetized. So I used to always carry around like a coin with me in my pocket to tighten things like this. This guy right here just comes with its own tool. It's a nice little touch. And once you got that on there, it just looks badass. That's the first thing I think when I see this. It gives you places to mount all over it on the sides, on the bottom, on the top, and different cold shoe, uh, places to mount microphones or other accessories. It beefs up your camera, makes it quite a bit heavier, which is actually good shooting video because it makes your shots a little bit more stable. It also protects your camera. I wouldn't even be afraid to drop this camera when this uh, cage is on here. It just feels like it's pretty much protected. It's like armor. And it also makes your camera look more professional. So if you're showing up to a shoot with just a small, tiny little camera, sometimes people don't take you seriously. This is one of the things that you add to it that makes it look a little bit more pro. So then I have a NATO rail attached to the top here. And this just allows me to attach a top handle. So this is a small rig, top handle, NATO grip or whatever it's called. And it just attaches on to the rail and tightens down and you got a top handle. I love the look of this top handle with the wood and the black metal. It's just a really good look. You can also adjust this any direction you want. I don't really end up doing that that much. I pretty much keep it right here in the middle. Um, but it also has a place to mount your monitor on the top or a microphone. 
and it locks in there. So that's really nice. So top handle is really nice and important for shooting video because it allows you to use the gravity and the weight of your camera to stabilize your shots. As you're holding it up here and the camera's hanging below, it takes away the jitters of actually holding the weight of your camera. And it allows you to kind of lock in and get a better hold to get a lot more stable shots. Next piece is the side handle. Now this isn't 100% necessary, but I really like using it. And it, if you look at most cinema cameras or all cinema cameras, they all have a really nice side handle. And it just kind of completes that cinema camera feel. You're locked in over here and here, and you really have control over your camera. And it feels solid, it feels good. And I use this side handle a lot because I mount my microphone on this side and it kind of keeps it out of the way. Once I have my monitor here, you know, I can't put it there. Uh, put it on the side here, it kind of messes with the access to the ports I've noticed. So I like to keep it over here on the right. And then I feed my cord around the handle and plug it into the camera, making sure that the cable is not in the way of anything I'm trying to do. And the microphone I have here is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's kind of one of the most common all around shotgun mics that are good to start out with at least. They're like 300 bucks. They're not cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than a professional shotgun mic like the Sennheisers. Um, those can be over $1,000. So this is actually a cheap microphone for professional use and it fits nicely up here and pretty much works for a lot of projects that I need. Next thing is a monitor. The monitor I have is the Feel World F6 Plus and it comes with an MP50 battery that mounts on the back and you can get different sizes of these that run longer. This one runs pretty long, I don't really have to charge it all that much. And this mounts right to the top here and it clips in because remember on that top handle it has this little latch here. So even if it's loose, it won't slide off. And this tilts really nice to any direction, however you're holding it. Um, so you can always have a really good view of your monitor. This is one of the most affordable monitors out there. It's 189 bucks. It's not as good as, or bright as like the Atomos Ninja. It doesn't do external recording either, but you can load LUTs on it and it does have false colors. And for me, that's pretty much what I needed it for. And it's bright enough for most occasions. I haven't really got myself into a situation where it wasn't bright enough. And it really makes a big difference shooting with a monitor. I remember when I first got this, I just ran around that whole day shooting with my new monitor because it's just fun to shoot on. You can see your final product better, you know? Like you're not just like straining to see this tiny little camera screen. You can now all of a sudden see what it's gonna look like. And then if you load LUTs in here, you can actually see what it's gonna look like after you edit it. So it's just a lot of fun shooting with, and it just got me more into shooting video, honestly, when I got it. Don't even bother with the cable it comes with because it'll only last you like a week. So get yourself a high quality HDMI cable. I got the Condor Blue, which is funny because I didn't get the blue version. I didn't want to add blue to my camera rig. I just kind of wanted it to be all black. So I got the black version, but this is an HDMI, which plugs into the monitor. And this is a micro HDMI. So make sure you get the micro HDMI and not the mini HDMI. For the plugin for the A6600, and I believe all the A-series cameras are a micro HDMI. Plug that in and it's out of your way. There's space here for your hand to move. The coiled part kind of keeps it all nice. It's not like moving around and getting in your way. And it just feels really durable. I have a feeling it's gonna last quite a while. And now you have both your cables that are out of the way and they're, you know, not really bothering you. The last thing you need is a variable ND filter. So most cinema cameras or all cinema cameras, true cinema cameras have ND filters built into the camera, which is really freaking nice. But if you don't have a camera, cinema camera, you can get a variable ND filter. And you know, it works pretty close to as well. 
you can adjust it. Mine that I have here is a KNF concept variable ND2 to ND32. So it's a pretty big range. I think they even have bigger ranges up to 400 ND. I find that this 32 is usually sufficient for me, even on brighter days. And now you have control over what light is coming into your lens if you're trying to shoot at like 1.4 on this lens and it's light out you're going to definitely need to darken this down with your nd filter in order to get that shot so now that you have that on there you pretty much have a complete cinema camera setup based off of a crop sensor camera that you can break down into this really small camera and take with you anywhere so this setup comes in just under $800, which is pretty damn good for turning your you know, small crop sensor camera into a cinema camera setup. And look how badass this looks too. I mean, you show up to a shoot with this and people are gonna know that you know what you're doing. Hopefully you know what you're doing. If you need to learn a little bit more about what you're doing, I actually have an online course specifically about how to become a freelance filmmaker and travel the world. And I'm giving it away for free right now. Just in exchange, all I ask is that you leave a review. It's a new course. I don't have many reviews yet. So take advantage of this and learn some new techniques about starting a freelance video business. Help me support this channel as well as myself and my freelance business. So that's it for my crop sensor cinema camera build. If you guys are new to this channel, please subscribe and that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.